What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over how we can create this responsive web page. So as you can see right now, we have many blocks of text and we also have a nav bar at the top that when we click on takes us to different endpoints. But of course, you can add your own URLs or whatever endpoints you want. And also that when we hover over the blocks, they will be selected. And the most important part to note is that when we resize the window to something that is too small, the navbar changes and so do the blocks so that it becomes readable on mobile. And this is very important because most users today will probably view your site on a mobile phone. So you want to make sure that your web page is adaptable. But that's all we will be making. So let's go ahead and get started in Visual Studio Code as always. And all you want to do is make sure you have an empty folder so we can get started with that. Just drag it into Visual Studio Code and we will do what we always do and create an index.html. Then inside here, all we have to do is specify HTML5. Also in this video, I want to go over what the viewport does in case you've been wondering until now. The viewport just makes sure that it scales properly on mobile devices. But as always, let's go here and give our website a title, which this time will be called Code Palace. And in this video, I want to introduce to you how you can actually link an external CSS file to your HTML project because we will be using some more CSS in this video. And let's get started by creating a new file immediately and we will call this mystyles.css. So now we have an empty CSS file and let's go back to our index.html and let's link the file to our HTML. So to do this, all we have to do is type in link and you'll see that there will be a CSS option and you can also write all of this manually, but I just like to use the shortcuts because they are very efficient. And we just need to change this to the CSS file that we created over here. So let's type in mystyles.css, but I will cover more about that in the full CSS tutorial later on in the course. But for now, we have successfully linked our CSS to our HTML project, which means we can now get started with working inside the body. So the first thing we want to do is create a nav section and you can use the nav keyword to do this. It's not required, but you can use it. You can also just create a normal div. Inside here, we're going to go ahead and create a few links and we're just going to use the hashtags as placeholders. So for the first one, we'll go for news and we are going to give these some class names, which will be referred to later on when we use the CSS. And the first one is gonna be called block one. And then inside here, we want to add a header one to give it a very strong text, essentially and it's going to be called news. So this will create the news section. And inside here, you can you don't have to include the H1, but I just thought it looks good for this tutorial. So inside here, you can place any text or any elements you want, and it will turn into a link as we have discussed in a previous video. And then you want to go ahead and copy this three times. And right here, we're gonna change this to home, and the final one's going to be changed to contact. Then we will change block one to block two, and block one to block three. And finally, we need to make sure they say home and contact. So this should take care of our nav bar. And in fact, if we go ahead and run it with a live server, you'll notice that we will have three links that tell us news, home and contact. But let's go back to the editor. And the next thing to do is to add a div and we will give this one a class name of block four. And then inside here, we're going to create another header and it's going to say 20 ways to be a good programmer. And immediately under that, we can create a header three tag and we are going to write a title of start here. Then right below, we're going to create a paragraph and I'm going to copy and paste in some lorem ipsum. And we're just going to copy and paste this one more time to fill in some space. And you should also know in case things start to look very messy, you can always right click on the page and format the document. So everything will be aligned in a nicer fashion and everything will look a bit nicer. Then under block number four, we're going to create block number five, which is essentially exactly the same. So let's go ahead and just copy this and paste it down here. But let's remove this part down here. So we only have one body of text inside here. And let's change the title to did you know and remove header number three, which also reminds me, let's change the title of the second header on the block number four to remember to subscribe. And then back down here to change the class of block number five to 
block number five. So I might have done that in a slightly confusing manner, but what's important is that you create block number four, that you create block number four with some text inside and a header, and that you create block number five the same way, with any text you want, of course. And then the final thing we have to do is create a footer. So we're gonna create another div with the class name of footer, and we're just going to create a header two tag that says footer. Now all we have to do is click on save or command or control plus S to save the page. And since we are running a live server, we can just go to our web page and the changes will be applied automatically. So as you can see so far, we have this very ugly layout. It's very basic because we have just done this in HTML, but now we can actually go to the CSS part of it and style it so we can have a real responsive layout. And this time we can go to mystyles.css. So the first thing we want to do is call our HTML element, which as you can see is the main element of the entire web page. And we want to apply some global attributes. The first one is the margin. We want that to start at zero because when you start a web page or you create an HTML, some of these elements have default margins that are not zero. And we will also set it to auto. Then we want to refer to our box sizing and we are going to use border box. This just means that everything is going to stay within the layout. And if you add padding, it's just going to get smaller instead of pushing the box outwards. Then we want to refer to the body and we are also gonna make sure that has a margin of zero. Then we want to select all of the links and we are going to call our text decoration line and we're gonna set this to none. So this means that even if it's a link, you will never see the decoration line anymore. And let's also set something to happen that when we hover over the links, we get a special effect. So when we hover over the link, we want the background color to turn to a tomato red. And we will provide a transition time to 0.3 seconds. So it looks like it fades in slowly, slowly to red and looks a bit nicer. Then we also want to select all of our divs and, and also set the hover attribute because inside here we will also change the background color to tomato red. We will set the transition to 0.3 seconds and we will set the color to white. And this is only for the text because in the body we will be using black text. So it's very good to see that when we transition to red in the background, the text turns black so we can have a better contrast. Next, we should refer to the class that we have created for the first block, which is block one, and create a pair of curly brackets. And as you may have noticed, we are using a dot this time instead of the hash symbol. And you may be wondering what's the difference between an ID and a class. And the documentation states that an ID should be used to only edit or decorate one element, while a class should be used to decorate multiple. So maybe you have a class that says round borders and you can use that anywhere you want in your HTML several times. While an ID should be used for one specific element, which could be your logo of a web page, for example. But those are the main differences. We could have gone through this tutorial using IDs instead of classes, but I just wanted to showcase that you can also use classes because they will become very important later on in your web development. But let's get back to creating our first block, which is block number one and we want to set a background color and it's gonna be hash two, 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 which is going to be a dark gray. Then we're going to set some box sizing, which is going to be the same as before, a border box. And we will want to add a float property, which gives it a sort of gravity and it pushes it to the left, which means we can align our items side by side. So just go ahead and type in float left and we're gonna give the first element a width of 20%. Now it's important that the elements of your nav bar correspond to 100% in total. And for this example, I'm going to use 20% for the first block, 60% for the second block and 20% for the third block. But if you happen to have four items there, make sure it's 25, 25, 25 and 25%. So it corresponds to 100% and takes all the space of the width. Then we want the text to align to the center of the block. So we'll just say text align center. We will give the text color a color of white. So just say color dot or color white. And below that, we will give it a padding of eight pixels. So now I just tapped on save. And if you go to our webpage, you'll notice that we will have our first element ready for display. But now of course we need to add the home and the contact. So we'll have a nice bar at the top. So let's go back to our editor and we can actually just copy and paste this two times. For the second one, we will change this to forest green and we have to change this to 60% of course and change the class to block two. 
Then let's change the third one to block three and we will leave the color at hash 222. It's at 20% and all of this is perfect. So let's go ahead and click on save and see our changes. So as you can see, we have a very nice nav bar at the moment, very similar to the one I created earlier. Next, we want to go ahead and refer to block number four, which is going to be one of our body blocks. And we're going to give it a background color of very light gray. So we're going to do hash, I believe 888 should be fine but uh, we can actually make it lighter. Just hover over the color over here and drag it up. And that should be fine for this example. Then for this one, we're going to say float left as always. Box sizing will be set to border box. The width will be set to 70%. And we are also going to set a default height for this block, which is going to be set to 300 pixels. Then I'm going to say that the text align should be justified, which means it will fill all of the space that it can from left to right. And we need to make sure that the color of this text is black. So we can just type in black. We'll give it some padding of 20 pixels. And I actually messed up for the height, we should go ahead and type in 800 and not 300. So when we go back to our page, you'll notice that we will now have this body section. Now let's go ahead and copy this for block number five and change the class to block number five. And let's actually make block number four even lighter. Let's change it all the way up to 226. So it's gonna be nearly white. It's gonna be very, very bright. And the height for this will remain at 800, but the only thing we have to change here is this to 30% because we want them to be side by side and occupy 100% of the width, as I said earlier. And finally, all we have left to edit is the footer. So we're gonna call dot footer and we're gonna give it a background color of hash 222, box sizing of border box, float to the left, a width of 100%. We will make sure that the text is aligned to the center. The color for the text is going to be white and we're gonna give it a padding of 10 pixels. Now, if we go back to our webpage, you'll notice that we'll have everything in a very nice order. So right now we have a very cool website that has a navigation at the top, but the only problem is that when we make it smaller, things start to look very ugly and you can't even read what's at the bottom over here. So now it's time to actually make this site scalable and also responsive so that people can look at it no matter what size their device is. So this would actually be a very good time to introduce you to the at media tag. So for this example, we will write at screen and we need to define a max width. So we'll type in max width, which I'm going to specify as 700 pixels. And what this means is when the window becomes smaller than 700 pixels, it's going to change to this layout. So inside here, we're going to add what we want to change when the screen becomes smaller than 700 pixels. So for example, we want to change our block one comma and then our block two and then our block three. We want to change all of these elements to have a width of 100%. And then we also want the text inside them to be aligned to the left. So we'll say text align left. And when we click on save, you'll see that our website will remain the same. But now when we make our website less than 700 pixels, you'll see that the news will stretch out to 100% or all of these nav elements will stretch out to 100%. And essentially we should do the same for the body so that people can actually read it. Otherwise it just becomes illegible if you look at it like this. So let's go ahead and call those tags as well. So block four dot block five. And we will just say that the height should be set to auto and the width will be set to 100%. Now when we click on save and close this window, you'll notice that everything will be adjusted to fit our second layout. But let's pretend we want to add a different layout for something that's even smaller than 500 pixels. So let's go ahead and just copy all of this and just paste it below. Now, if we change this to 500 pixels, for example, let's pretend it's a very small phone or something like that. We can choose to just change the background color to a complete black, but all the color should still remain white. And I don't remember if we already specified it as white, but just in case I'm gonna specify it here and click on save. Now, if we make the screen very small, you'll notice that the menu will turn completely black. So you can do this actually as many times as you want for all different forms and sizes. And yeah, in the end, we created a very successful responsive web layout 
which reacts to us moving the website and making it smaller and when we increase it again. And also when we hover over the elements, everything works as it should. If we click on contact, you see the end tag change. If you click on news, you see the end tag also change and it's a success. But uh, with that being said, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See you.